Ah, hello, Facebook Live. Just talking to myself. Just to myself. Just talking to myself. Got some questions tonight. Just talking to myself. Hello, Facebook world. Gray Ghost looking sharp, right? Mo Trout, how you doing, my brother? Six pack four forty and gump it in the house. Hello, can you guys hear me okay? Always got to do my sound check because you guys are my sound guys. Clean the seats in the house. Oh, good, Mo. Glad you got those uh, surprises that uh, I, I, I sent you. I um, everybody likes surprises, and you guys got to see what surprise I got. Besides a whole truckload of tools and stuff. Robert C. in the house. Wolfman. Somebody sent me a box of these. Right? So let, let's think about this. I mean, you know, we've, we've got um, Vanilla Ice. He was an ice, uh, you know, a white wrapper. And then we have um, M&M. And, you know, they're, they're all kind of food related. So I guess when I start wrapping and I get my gold grill, I'll be the white fudge ding dong. That's right. WFDD, the white fudge ding dong. Anyway, Kevin, thank you for these. Um, my, uh, my UPS guy enjoyed them too. Uh, he, he's a skinny guy, so he got to eat a few of them. So um, I didn't have to fight him for anything. He was very gracious. But uh, my new rapper name, White Fudge Ding Dong, okay? All right, welcome, everyone. Oh, Capital T in the house, too. Good to see you, Tim. Thanks for stopping by. I'm working on some crazy stuff. You know, I just got this massive 40 series driver unit in, and I've got the driven. I'm just waiting on the prototype of the uh, plate that I showed you guys last week, and then... Uh, then we'll start uh, kicking some 40 series butt with them big uh, 420cc engines. I've got a Predator 420 right here in the house. And, uh, oh, you guys be good. The wife's here. Um, Mrs. Goat, she keeps an eye on you guys. She knows who's been naughty and who's been nice, okay? Um, but uh, the 40 series, I'm very excited about this. This is going to be a good project. Um, prototype should be back. I'm thinking I'll have them next week. Uh, take it to my buddy, have it welded. Um, Angelo in the house, good to see you. And uh, Jody Powell, the, the the first lady of go, the first man of go karts. Sorry about that, Jody. Um, so Jody wanted me to talk about rod bolts tonight. So you know, bigger is always better, right? So here at OMBWarehouse.com, we always want the biggest, baddest, bestest. So you know, rod bolts if they're an issue for you. What we're going to do is we're going to put the biggest, baddest rod bolts in, into your engine. So I've got the new Predator rod bolt here, and uh, it's grade 8 steel. Um, you can torque this to 465,000 foot-pounds, and uh, it'll hold up for you. It only weighs about oh, 12 ounces, maybe a pound, but uh, these are great for, for the Predator engines. And you can't torque these too far. You know, you, you want to pre-stretch this first. But uh, make sure you use a lot of lube on it. Um, you'll notice a solid construction. And it comes with a lock washer, too. So the lock washer is important for you guys that um, are not properly torquing these rod bolts. So Wolfman, I, I think you need this in uh, one of your engine builds. Um, this will hold up for you. You know, OMBWarehouse.com rod bolts, they're the best. That's why you need to like us here. That's why you're here at the Grey Go Garage, right? to get the special deal on the new rod bolts. Look at that bad boy. Right? Look at that three-quarter inch bolt. That's pretty bad. I like that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Temecula Bob, good to see you, brother. Thanks for stopping by. And Mike Peak in the house. Joel, what up with you, man? David and Angelo are slow. That, that's because they're not on the West Coast. Nola Mini Bikes, Joe in the house. Um, Thanks uh, for you New Orleans guys popping in. Love to see you guys. Um, hopefully we'll see Arizona mini bikes in here tonight too. Um, I, I know that uh, Too Slick Nick has been uh, getting crazy down there in the desert. 
and uh, working on some stuff, and uh, we're working together on some stuff. So, and Thomas in from Canada. Hey, you hoser. That's what we all think down here, right? You hoser. So, what well, looks kind of dinky? Yeah, I know. I know. Um, that, that's the biggest bolt we could get for Mr. Wolf on, on short notice. So, anyway, tonight we're going to talk about um, co common issues that, that I see, and I, I'm, I'm faced with this daily, multiple times. Um, clutches. You know, Max Torque does not include set screws with their clutches anymore, and that's for a good reason. Um, <laughs> you guys, <laughs> Greg in the house, good to see you. OG Harrison Wildcat. Yeah, it's warm here. I didn't wear flip-flops today. I feel better in tennis shoes. So um, maybe tomorrow. It was nice last weekend. We had the Cinco de Drinco at my house, and uh, it was 84 degrees here in Southern California. Everybody was uh, in the pool and um, socially lubricated, and we had a great time. You guys that are in colder weather areas, <laughs> sorry about that. We had an earthquake too. Oh, scary. Um, yeah, it lasted for, you know, three and a half seconds and nobody even woke up for it. So, um, cold beer here. No, we don't drink beer here. Um, all we do here at the Grey Goat Garage is drink the OMB Kool-Aid. I love the wife's Kool-Aid. Mrs. Goat's the baddest at making Kool-Aid. Anyway, clutches. Max Torque says, don't use set screws. Let it float on the shaft. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. The, the, the chain kind of self-aligns that clutch. It's not going to float real far. And by doing that, you re reduce the stress on the bushing, on the chain. And, you know, you guys, and you know who you are that, that put your chains on too tight. You're tearing up your bushing. And then you never lube it by pulling the dipstick out of the engine and putting a couple drops of oil right down there on that bronze bushing. Um, clutches are a big issue. Um so many times I, I get the guys with the go-karts that say, yeah, I bought this uh, $20 Chinese clutch, and, uh, yeah, thanks for the free shipping, but, uh, you know, it wore out in three and a half minutes. Uh, well, what's your rear gear? Oh, I've got a 36-tooth rear sprocket. Well, you probably have 18-inch tall tires. No, they're 19-inch tall. <sighs> okay. Um, yeah, well, uh, you know, I don't think I can uh, help you on that. Well, why not? You sold me a defective unit. But anyway, let that clutch, that clutch float on the shaft. Um, it, it doesn't hurt anything. We like to capture the, the clutch on the shaft with a bolt and a large washer and a lock nut. Um, OMBWarehouse.com, we sell a, a simple kit for that. It's four bucks. It's uh, the best four bucks you can spend. Um, but there's, I get some few people say, hey, I've got a five inch, uh, five eighths inch crankshaft. Uh, Stole it off my uh, grandma's edger, and uh, grandma's a little upset about the edger, but I'm putting it on a mini bike, and I need a clutch. Uh, and and I'll say, well, okay, but is your shaft drilled and tapped? And they'll go, huh? And I say, yeah, you need something to hold that clutch on the shaft. Set screws aren't the greatest idea. You'll uh, mar up the shaft, and you don't want that anyway. And you need something to positively capture that on the shaft. So tonight, we're going to drill out a crankshaft. Um, hey. You guys be easy on my boy Jody there. I love that guy. Dude's awesome. Okay? So I, I'm, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be watching you guys. And, and yes, Joel, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the Noram clutches as well. Um, I like those a lot, but you know, for most of our uses, the Max Torque clutch, it's inexpensive at $28.99. It works very well. I've never had a problem with mine. You guys know my nickname's not Tiny. Um, I, I've got some ungoverned engines running a standard Max Torque SS clutch. Um, it works really well. It, it's it's cheap. It's easy. It, it it's effective. I don't have any issues. Do I lube them? Probably not as much as I should but I don't have any problems with them either because I do lube them occasionally. So let's uh, let, let, let's think about our crankshaft too. Good buddy of mine. Here, I'll stand up for you, Angelo. Good buddy of mine gave me this Briggs three and a half horsepower IC engine. I'd love to put a, a 
five horsepower rod and a, and a short piston in it. And that, that, that'll that come later as soon as I start uh, doing a little bit of math on this and start figuring this out. But it came with a five inch, five eighths inch shaft and it's a short shaft, but it's not tapped or threaded. So it's got the hole in there from the, from the factory where they put it on the machine. But, you know, when I put my clutch on here, yeah, I still got about an inch that I'm short here. So th this is a very solid engine, and I'd love to make a hot rod out of it. I know it's only three and a half horse, but it is an IC. It has a steel bore. It's probably a bushing engine on the inside, and I know it's a bushing here. But, um, you know, I'll, I'll find the right uh, bearing side cover for this, and I'll get a three-quarter inch crank or a five-eighths that's a little bit longer. So I just, it's one of those get around to its things. So th this clutch, obviously the set screws aren't going to go anywhere on this. And we would want to use it on this engine because the shaft is short. But it makes a perfect engine for us to discuss how to drill a crank. So what I will promise each and every one of you. Whoop! My set's falling apart. Get out of here. Each and every one of you that um, needs to drill a crank. Um, Joe, I've heard that about you. Huh? The word's out. Um, but that's fine. And um, David Wolf, how many Max Torque clutches do you have, rookie? Um, bought this years ago from OMB Warehouse. And this is a three-quarter inch bushing that slides over the engine and gives the appropriate sized hole for the drill for a 5 16 24 tap. What I have here is just a simple bronze bushing that's a 3 quarters outside, 5 eighths inside. Fits right inside this very nicely. Slides right in. Oil impregnated bushing. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah. So we can use this to slide that right over the 5 eighths shaft on this engine. That's going to be my guide to start drilling. And like I told you guys, uh, I'm a tool guy. I love tools, but I like tools because sometimes the hot chicks come over to the house and say, hey, great goat, I need to drill my crank. And I'll say, oh, I've got a tool for that. So if you guys need to borrow this, if anybody, what do you mean Hollywood ain't working? You know, they say the camera adds 10 pounds. There's 15 cameras on me right now. Okay. You know, so come on now. So anyway, any of you that want to use this, I mean, I know everybody here almost, um, you know, so if you needed uh, to borrow this tool, you send me an email, help at ombwarehouse.com and say, hey, Greg Goat, need to drill my crank in the subject line. I'll send it to you. Use it. Enjoy it. Have fun with it. Send it back to me. The, the send it back to me is the important part because you guys know that I'll send it to you. Because I don't think I've welched on a deal yet. Well, not not with you guys anyway. So if you guys need to drill a crankshaft, you come see me. Help at ombwarehouse.com. Gray goat, I need to drill my crank, and I'll send the tool to you. If, you, if you're really desperate, I'll send you a drill bit too. Um, if, you, if you're not desperate, hey, Clay's in the house. Yeah, no, I know, Clay. Well, um, some technical issues on that. That is not a tool we sell anymore. Um, but, you know, because you guys are all my friends, you know, in, in Hollywood, you really got to watch your friends. But, you know, outside of Hollywood, like like I'm here at the Hollywood Studios today, uh, outside of Hollywood, you guys are good as gold to me. So if you need to use that tool, let me know. Send me an email, help at ombwarehouse.com, and I will get the tool out to you um, when you're done with it send it back to me. Easy enough. So I appreciate you guys liking us on Facebook. This is ombwarehouse.com. I am Eric in the gray goat garage. It's getting grayer every day. All these questions I have to answer all the time. But uh, I've got some questions for you. And um, Chad, my shipping out here, you know, we do things differently on the West Coast. We get it done. We don't screw around and say, oh, well, maybe uh, I forgot. Yeah, come on, dude. Um, if you need the tool, you, you email me, and I'll send it to you, okay? Um, yeah, Angelo, I talked to your wife about that, and she said that um, that your tool's a little rusty. Um, anyway, first question of the night. You guys ready to roll? Where's Tom in the house? 
anyway, we'll we'll forget about Tom tonight. Maybe he's 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 playing remotely. Okay, first question. In 1914, a proclamation designating Mother's Day as a national holiday was signed by what president? In 1914, a proclamation designating Mother's Day as a national holiday was signed by what president? Come on, I need a name. First name or last name even. You guys are weak. You're bad Googlers. Nope, Kevin, sorry, brother. Robert C. in the house with Woodrow Wilson. You know how Robert C. knew that? <coughs> Robert C. went to high school with Woodrow Wilson. Sorry, Robert, I was just joking. Woodrow Wilson signed the Mother's Day proclamation into law and in designated as the second Sunday in May. So Sunday is Mother's Day. Don't forget your mothers, okay? That, that's important. Hey, Paul's in the house. Good to see you, Paul. Um, Paul's going to be doing a Facebook Live here shortly, doing a, a torque converter install on a Coleman CT200U. Um, Paul and I have been talking a lot about this, and uh, – Paul is a great guy and has tools, not a lot of knowledge about mini bikes, but um, was able to install our kit with some hands-on support from the Gray Goat. And uh, he's having fun with his Coleman CT200U right now. Uh, the torque converter, it uh, keeps the wear onto the back tire and off the front tire. So Lewis in the house, Texas is in the garage. Philip, you, you came in with the right question, but um, you're a little bit late, brother. Right answer anyway. So anyway, let, let's drill this crank out. You guys can see the gray goat in action. I know you guys like to watch me sweat. So come on. What I've done here is I've taped off my drill bit because I don't want to go any deeper than that. It's about an inch and a quarter. Okay, so I put some tape on my drill bit just to give me an index uh, of how far to go in. One thing you'll notice, these cranks are all cast iron with the exception of the Honda engines, which are forged. Um, but this cast crank here, they're very easy to drill. I put a rag down here so I don't make a lot of mess because um, the Great Gold Garage, we like to stay clean. So what I'm going to do is use my OMBWarehouse.com cutting lube. And I'm just going to put some lube onto the drill bit. Put my bushing and guide on the engine. One thing I didn't account for was the width of the guide. So we're just going to take the tape off and we're going to wing it, okay? What I'm going to want to do on occasion is clean all this out. So I'm going to get my carb cleaner and a rag. Make sure your eyes are away from it and just blow anything out of there. So I'm going to use a little bit more of my lube, put the adapter back onto the engine. And you can see some nice chips coming out now. Things nice and cool because I like it cool here in the Great Go Garage.
Okay. Then I'm going to want to remove this again. Things get a little hot in here. Get my bushing back in there. Get my rag. Clean some of the chips out of here. That'll also cool it down a little bit. More oil on the drill. Let's get my guide back on here. Make sure it's down. Now I'm going to check my depth. So we're right about there, right about an inch and a quarter right now. So let's take this bushing off. I like to keep things clean. Get the shavings out of there. And now I'll come back to you guys. One thing I want you to notice on this Briggs engine was I put that Tecumseh air cleaner on there. I did that so the Tecumseh guys don't have a bunch of whining going on. So, okay. So I put the Tecumseh air cleaner on there just for you Tecumseh guys. Okay. So quit your whining. All right. Next step, I need to tap that. But let's uh, let's do another question real quick. This one is near and dear to my heart, and uh, as I get older, my uh, my my adventure becomes more charitable. Um, those of you that know me know that I'm involved with a charity in Panama, and uh, it's down in a region called Bocas del Toro, which is on the Caribbean side of Panama, up by the Costa Rican border. Um, awesome place. So this question is about Bocas del Toro. You ready? All right. Bocas del Toro, Panama, is how many degrees north of the equator? Bocas del Toro, Panama, is how many degrees north of the equator? Evan Spire, good to see you in the house, brother. Chad stop by. Thanks, Chad. Like us on Facebook. We are OMBWarehouse.com. I am the gray goat. I'm an angry old man, but half you guys like me. So Bocas del Toro, Panama is how many degrees north of the equator? Mo, it can't be 361 degrees. Come on, dude. Angelo, you're close, dude. Randy Blue, gump it in the house, nine degrees. That nine degrees north figure is important for people that live there. Nine degrees north of the equator means they don't have hurricanes. So they might get an earthquake now and then, but um, we have that all the time here in Hollywood. So it's no big deal, right? So we can deal with that. So, nah, Jody, it's not on the equator. I'll send you some pictures later, brother. Um, Pan Panama is awesome. Okay, and don't tell Mrs. Goat this, but last time we were in Panama, we're walking up to this third floor apartment that my brother-in-law has. And as we're walking up the stairs, I'm saying, Mrs. Goat, Mrs. Goat. And she's like, leave me alone. I'm walking upstairs. Mrs. Goat, a little clumsy. And I'm like, Mrs. Goat, look. And she's like, I can't. And I said, Mrs. Goat, look. Three feet away from us was a sloth. It was awesome. She says, can I touch it? And I'm like, no, don't touch it. Just let, let it be. Sloths just like to hang out, you know? Those guys only poop like once a month, and we don't want to be around that time. So um, awesome place. So look it up on a map. Bocas del Toro, Panama. Um, can't go back till September, and it's killing me. So anyway. Now, now we need to tap this, Craig. Yeah, like us on Facebook. Um, we are OMB Warehouse, and uh, I am the Gray Goat. They call me Eric sometimes. 
and uh, those are some of the nicer names they call me. So it's important for you guys to like us. It's important that you know we're OMBWarehouse.com. We have all the parts. Um, you know, it's always difficult right now. Springtime, we're buying a lot of stuff. And, you know, as soon as we get it, it goes out the door. And, you know, make, make sure you pay attention. Sometimes if it's not in stock, that doesn't mean it's not available. It just means it's going to take me a few extra days to get it to you. So have patience with us. We're working as hard as we can. Trust me. Um, I, I work for the hardest working people that I've ever seen. Um, uh, Vicky and Hent, they, uh, old, old man Hent and Vicky, they, they work their tails off and they, they want to do the best they can for you. So company owned business. We are a small company, but, um, we, we do big things. So like us on Facebook, that's important for us. Um, okay. Now we're going to tap this crank. Here's what I'm going to do though. I don't want this crank moving around a whole bunch while I'm tapping it. So I'm going to pull the spark plug out of this engine and put some rope down in it. I'm not just going to use whatever rope that Billy Bob Hilljack has laying in the back of his truck. I want to use a nice nylon rope that's not going to leave anything in the cylinder. Because, you know, don't, don't use old uh, hemp rope or Cecil or whatever it is. Use a nice nylon rope. Use some new stuff. Burn the ends. Keep it from going everywhere. So to tap this. We're going to pull the spark plug. I loosened this already, okay? So, I'm going to get the piston down on the bore. And on these Zell head engines, I want to put it at an angle because the valves are over here and the cylinder is right here. So, I'm going to push it over at an angle. And I'm just going to fill the cylinder with some rope. I know it's old school, it's backyard. But it works. So I'm just going to put as much rope as I can get comfortably in here. Then I'm just going to push this back up to the top. So now my rope is holding the piston against the cylinder head, and now I can tap it. I've got my 5 16 24 tap and my swap meet tap handle. $5 I paid for that. It's really nice. Um, Gonna lubricate this up a little bit and just get this started. Like I said, this metal is fairly soft in these, so it doesn't take a whole lot of pressure to get this started. Do your best to get it started straight and then just start tapping it. I'm gonna go in just a little ways, then I'm gonna. Whoops, got to go back the other way now. Then I'm going to bring this back out. I like to do that because you're going to collect some junk on this tap. And I'm going to take the, the carb cleaner, get some of the junk out of the tap. And Angelo, don't look in this while you're, you're spraying lube in, or spraying the cleaner in there. And the, the threads I started, they're clean now. So I've got a clean tap, clean threads, apply a little more lube to this. Spin the engine back the other way, let the rope hold it. And then I'll continue to tap it. Normally I'd have my hands all over it, everywhere. If you feel it start to bind up with the tap, I take it out and do it again. Be nice if I had a 5 16 fine bottoming tap, but I don't. So we're going to do the best we have with what we got. And you guys notice I'm not as strong as I used to be. I used to be real strong. So we'll stop there because you guys have the idea. Clean this out real quick. So now that that's clean, 
all I got is an Allen head laying around. Now you can bolt your clutch on. It is truly just that simple. There's there's no uh, Hollywood magic here. This this is an easy job to do, and um, for for anybody that needs to get it done. Like I told you, if you need the tool, you email me, help at ombwarehouse.com, and I will get the tool for you. I will send it to you at my cost. You send it to me at your cost. Pull our rope out. That's all there is to it, except for the mess I got to clean up on the floor. Mrs. Goat's going to kill me if I track that in the house. <coughs> Sorry. Buckeye in the house. Have some Kool-Aid, Tom. Thank you for stopping by. So anyway, next question. Oh, Jody, is that it? Okay, the nine button is next to the zero. I get it. Yeah, sorry about that, Jody. Uh, Mr. Pat's in the house, too. Are you guys watching the build-off? Um, <laughs> nice, Joe. Um you guys, all right, the build-off this year. You guys looking at uh, Pete, Dr. Shop Teacher, what he's doing to a Gilson? Um, hey, Cliff, in the house, buddy. How you doing, mister? I uh, was thinking about you the other day. Um, no, not like that, Cliff. It wasn't a, of a sexual nature. Um, Pete, Dr. Shop keep, Teacher, um, if you had to put a, a labor figure on that mini bike he's building a fifteen thousand dollar mini bike um amazing work that he's doing over there and um he's got that gilson in good shape he's putting disc brakes front and back he's um fabricating a lot of his own parts um i don't know where he gets that amount of time um i don't know that i've ever had that much time or or the skills to even get it done if, if i did have the time so yeah 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 pete's uh Pete's doing a good job and uh, pretty amazing. Um, no, I didn't hit my thumb with a hammer. Oh, you think 20K, huh, Chip? Um, yeah, it, it, it's amazing work that he's doing. Uh, anybody that you, anybody here that's not familiar with oldminibikes.com, please go on to the site. Um, you know, oldminibikes.com is the epicenter of the minibike world. Um, it all started there. There was no resource like that anywhere, and there still is no resource like that anywhere. And um, the, the people I've met, uh, with the exception of Angelo, are lifelong friends. And a um, great group of people over there. But um, the amount of engineering that Pete's doing on that mini bike is um, truly amazing. I, uh, I, I don't get to go on there as much as I used to because I'm on the computer all day. And uh, sometimes at night I don't want to do it. So, um, yeah, ch check it out. <laughs> you guys kill me. Um, but, uh, yeah, Pete, Pete's got a, a heck of a deal going on there. He's addressed all the issues with the, with the Gilson. And um, he's making it bigger, better, badder. And it, it truly is an amazing bike. So um, if you want to learn something and, and – show what uh, patience and perseverance can achieve, um, check out Pete's bike. Um, uh, it's, uh, forget what he called it, but it's Dr. Shopkeeper and it's the Gilson build on the OMB, uh, oldminibikes.com, OMB 2018 build off. Uh, check Pete out, um, wish he was on here. So, um, <laughs> you guys with all your comments, I wish you guys could see all these comments, good Lord. Yeah. Anyway, let's go on to the next question. All right, you guys ready? No, really, you ready? Come on now. Briggs and Stratton is connected to the McCulloch Corporation. Robert McCulloch married a Briggs daughter. What was her first name? Robert McCulloch married one of the daughters of the Briggs family of Briggs and Stratton. Her name was made famous by a Beach Boys song. 
Briggs and Stratton is connected to the McCulloch family. Robert McCulloch married a Briggs daughter. What was her first name? Her first name was made famous by a Beach Boys song. So, see, the neighbors are home. Like Kool-Aid on Facebook Live. Come on, guys. I make these questions easy for you because I, I, I know that, you know, some of you like Chip, or Chipper are um, of a lower IQ, so I'm trying to be easy on you guys. Okay? So, Randy Blue, Gumpet in the house. Gumpet's up to two now. Bob, 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 Barbara Ann. That's right. Barbara Ann Briggs married Robert P. McCulloch of the McCulloch Corporation. So there, Kyle Moody, good to see you, brother. Um, I don't know how it happens like that, you know? I guess when, when you're motor families, you marry into motor families, like Hollywood people marry Hollywood people, you know, like, like Brangelina and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I don't I don't get it. <laughs> so anyway, Gumpet, thanks for playing. Um, anyway, I need your guys' help. I uh, did something very impulsive and crazy the other day, and uh, bought me this this giant two-stroke engine, made by um, uh, Cuyuna, which is spelled C-U-Y-U-N-A. So I have a Cuyuna engine coming in the mail. It's a 215cc two-stroke piston port engine. Uh, has some sort of clutch that's already on it. Um, it looks like a tapered shaft, so I may have to pull it apart and uh, have, have the, the shaft turned. But um, I, I have plans for that. So if any of you guys are familiar with um, the uh, Cuyuna or two-stroke international 215cc single-cylinder engines, let me know. Um, I've got these uh, harebrained grand plans of putting a, uh, a 40 series torque converter on it and then putting it on a mini bike. Simple Tom's in the house. Good to see you. So I'm excited. And when I, when I get this engine, I'll show you guys what I got. Um, it, it's kind of a monster. It's 39 pounds, but uh, with the right carburation and maybe a thin head gasket, they make up to 20 horsepower at 6,000. So I'm uh yeah, I know. It's not a mini bike engine. It's not a snowmobile. No, this was one of the the um, domestic engines, I think, made for the military uh, for some application. So, you know, I think stock form, they're eight horse, but comes a little tiny carburetor. You throw a, a Makuni 34 on there and um, maybe an expansion chamber. I'm kind of have this harebrained idea and yeah, I don't care. Half my stuff's not mini bikes anyway. Neck. Um, it's 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 got a clutch built on, but everything looks like a tapered shaft from what I can tell. I don't have the engine yet. Just been doing a little homework on it. So yeah, Wolf Wolf makes. Um, yeah, need a bigger cam in that two stroke. Right. Okay. So I uh, I'm thinking about getting one of those MB two hundred dash twos, that full suspended. Uh, bike anybody have one of those because i uh I, I like that bike you know I'm, I'm not a big fan of the uh the warriors and the mb 200s um I, they look funky to me and and for me it, it's it's how it looks too so i uh, i've been looking at that mb 200-2 um which is the trail master whatever it is um comes with a torque converter and everything but uh i'm thinking about brian buying a brand new one chopping it up maybe lengthen the swing arm and then maybe put uh, 20 horsepower of uh, ring, ding, 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 two stroke. So I, uh, I've, I've got some plans on that one. So, um, <laughs> Hey Wolf, have you seen me? My name's not tiny dude. Why you gotta make fat people jokes? I thought that's what uh, Ange was for. Anyway, next question. Gotta make sure I'm keeping score on you guys. We love Briggs and Stratton. I'm a flathead fan. I love my flatheads. You guys are familiar with uh, the aluminum bore engines 
are called cool bore with a K. Cool bore. What year was the cool bore engine introduced? What year was the Briggs and Stratton cool bore engine introduced? That's an easy one. Come on, Googlers. Let's get going. Come on, Mo. I know you're competitive. You can join in. I'll have some Kool-Aid while you're looking. Love that grape Kool-Aid. Mo Trout in the house, 1958. That's when the first cool bore engine was introduced. Uh, I know they were making um, aluminum engines before the war. I don't know if they were sleeved or not. I, I knew that some of them had an aluminum cylinder, but maybe it wasn't um, the, the right material or whatever. So you guys can keep, keep guessing, but uh, Mo Trout in the house with 1958. Mo's just looking for another gift basket from the Grey Goat Garage. That's right. So anyway, clutches. I already went over this. Don't use set screws unless you absolutely have to, have to. Um, it, it's inappropriate for this to, to tell you that my tool is available for you. But uh, if you need uh, this uh, tool to drill your crank, email me, help at ombwarehouse.com. And I will send the tool to you. All I ask is you send it back to me when you're done. Okay? Easy enough. So we, we are here to help. We're uh, very entrenched in the mini bike community. We, we care about mini bikes. And uh, we care about our customers. So ombwarehouse.com. If you need help, you email me. Help at ombwarehouse.com. Set screws, bad. Drilled and tapped crank with a large washer, good. Okay, so don't forget that. Gosh, those threads I made are so nice. And that was all live too. And look at it, it's only it's only 42 minutes past the hour. Dude, I am cruising this. This is like child's play to me, right? That's right. So anyway, I showed you guys last week. I'm working on some 40 series stuff for you guys who want to put those gx 390s or predator 420s on uh on your outdoor buggies or even mini bikes got some got some stuff working i'm very excited about it and um you guys will be the first to see this um once i have uh my my prototype um done you guys will see it on an engine and I, i've got a, a new design for a mounting plate i'm very excited about it and uh, it's going to fit uh, 20 series, 30 series, 40 series. Um, and we'll work with either the um, 40 series driven or the 44D driven. So we'll, we'll get you set up. We'll take common belt sizes too. Yeah. Say yes. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Works with TAVs. That's what we're talking about, Kevin. Come on, man. What are you doing? Is it legal where you're at now? I didn't think so. So anyway, let's get uh, another question. This question, I know we're kind of cruising through tonight, but um, we'll have a little question and answer session towards the end. Um, the, uh, the boss lady, Mrs. Goat, came up with this question. What is the greatest officially recorded number of children born to one mother what is the greatest officially recorded number of children born to one mother and this will scare you you guys pay attention playing for prizes here stuff directly from the gray goat garage that's right what is the greatest officially recorded number of children born to one mother? Mo Trout in the house. 69. Some Russian lady, they said she was a peasant. And typically you're a peasant after you have three kids. She had 69 kids. In that 69 children, she had 16 twins, 7 triplets, 
and four sets of quadruplets. Hello, 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 hello. Good Lord. Can you imagine 69 children? There, there's, there's no way. Um, yeah. Mo, whoa, didn't even know that. So, you guys are killing me. My kid's home. Hey, kid, how you doing? What's up? If my kid ever has six children, I'll kill her. Okay? Yeah. Two's enough. Good Lord. Greg, sorry, man. You're a little bit late on that, but, um, you know, it, it was good. But, you know, here's the unfortunate part. At this point in time, now we have a two-way tie between Mo Trout and Gumpet. Yes, Mo, there is a little goat. Uh, my, my little goat is 24 years old now. <laughs> um, yeah, you're right about that, Kevin. Um, so anyway, we're going to have to have a tiebreaker question. George or Jorge, good to see you in the house, brother. You're a little bit late. You, you, you missed the uh, questions, but um, like us on Facebook. That's what we're here for. Come on, I want to see all those little blue things going blue, 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 up the side of the screen. So help me out, guys. Come on now. Like us on Facebook. We are OMBWarehouse.com. This is the Grey Go Garage. If I'm old and cranky and I look like I'm tired, that's because I am. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll hook you up, Randy Blue. Um, dude, you know what I forgot? I forgot the hat tonight. You know what? I'm going to save it for next week now. Yeah, I got a special hat for you guys, but uh, we'll, we'll save it for next week. And Liz in the house. Good to see you. Say hi to Jimmy for me. Um, all right, Mo and Gumpet, you guys are tied right now. So now we're going to have the tiebreaker question. And, and I, and I know we're, we're hustling through this stuff tonight, but, um, we're going to, we're going to do something here in a minute. So you guys ready? Here's the tiebreaker. All right. Name the seventh planet from the sun. What is the seventh planet from the sun? John, good to see you. Uh, thanks for stopping by, brother. Name the seventh planet from the sun. <laughs> oh wow you guys are all around it um randy blue in the house um it's a uh, uranus uranus is the seventh planet from the sun okay so um uh gumpet randy blue in the house i got your notes here randy so I'll uh, I'll be in touch with Robert and um, yeah the uh, the seventh planet from the sun is Uranus okay um, yes Eric I I am from Venus thank you oh yes no I I, I am one of the prettiest men in Hollywood Th thank you David I, I appreciate that so thank thank you guys uh, um, you know I appreciate you guys thinking what a handsome man I am so. Anyway, <coughs> I know we've talked a little bit about this before, and you know we, we're seeing the mini bike world gravitate away from the vintage stuff solely, and so many people think that um, they want to restore Doodlebug DB30s, and um, hey, I'm all about that. You know, it's not quite a classic yet, but um, soon it will be. So. Um, you know, a lot of us will, you know, love to ride mini bikes, but don't want to take a, <coughs> a, a, a pristine TT500 rub through the mud. I get that. So, you know, we'll uh, th think about buying one of the Chinese bikes. And that, that's why I'm really thinking about that MB200 Trailmaster thing. Um, full suspension, a little cushy for my big tushy. And, um, I'm thinking that would be a decent ride and uh, not a lot of money. So um, 
but as we we get into today's mini bike scene you know so much of it is the chinese bikes you guys get me so choked up with your generosity um love that yeah even the motorbox stuff but what, what's what's the missing link here what what is not available out there that should be available out there um you know omb warehouse we are committed to uh not not just uh selling parts um but we're also you know i would like to um hard to build a whole mini bike these days um you know, especially if if you're not uh building some badass stuff like uh, temecula bob does um his bikes are beautiful his frames are amazing but um you know when when you're a corporation then things get a little bit sticky because then you got to deal with liability and stuff like that <coughs> sorry about that talking for an hour gets me choked up um so what 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 products are not available that need to be available yeah i know john I, I i get that um you know all the all the db 30 forks are no longer available Th that is a, a a challenge and that's something that that i am looking into um you know the uh the original doodlebug the db 30s with the disc brake um try and find a rear wheel for that that's brand new um <clears throat> i think coleman might have some but i'm not sure that the ct100 is the same as the doodlebug um haven't been able to verify that anybody of you uh you guys in Los Angeles, if you have a DB30 and you want to sell it, email me at help at ombwarehouse.com. Hey, Greg Goat, I got a doodle bug for you. Um, I want one just for testing and development. Um, not, nothing I'll restore or um, chrome plate the wheels. Uh, the chrome's too expensive and uh, it's a doodle bug. But, um, you know, huge following on those bikes out there. A lot, a lot of guys out there. Um, <clears throat> Kevin, I have that in my notes. Um, as soon as I'm done with the back plate with these uh, 40 series cover, um, I, I am working on not just a cover for the 40 series, but I'll also have a cover for the 30 series that'll go onto the stock backing plate. So that's uh, in, in my wheelhouse. I, I have some designs drawn out right now. Um, Yeah, John, China can make those uh, rear wheels for us. Um, the only problem with China is, one, it's far away. Two, um, the the commitment is is huge on those. You know, I, I don't know that, um, you know, if, if I committed to a 1,000 of them, that uh, we, we could sell a 1,000 of them in a year. And, uh, you know, they take up a lot of room in the warehouse. Although you guys can always stop by our location at 2550 Edgeley Road in Levittown, Pennsylvania, um, we'll take you for a forklift ride through the warehouse. But then you'll also see that it takes a lot of room to store some of this stuff. So um, I am working on the uh, 30 and 40 series covers. Um, like I showed you guys last week, I have the um, just a, a regular cover to bolt on any engine that uh, will look pretty and uh you know protect you from chain spray and stuff like that so um that that is in the works also and uh yes randy the warehouse is packed um we have a lot of stuff but you know think think about it this way i mean if, if you looked at our clutch brake kit you would know that that is the most solid kit on the planet um the the covers that we make for those you have your choices of a standard Rutman a little in cover, excuse me, Kool-Aid's coming up. Um, or we've got the Arco long and short, but we also have Manco covers. And, you know, we, we've done a lot of different stuff like that. We want to support this community. So if you guys, you know, not, not think about it on, on the fly and, um, you know, think about if there's something that, that is one, we, we have to be able to make enough to sell it. But two, if it's needed in the community, email me, help at ombwarehouse.com. 
we're we're here for you guys. That's what we do. That's that's the the, the foundation of our company is um, help keeping old mini bikes on the road and keeping you guys happy with quality parts. Um, look, look at our adjustable jack shaft with the uh, weld on plates that that allow you to adjust your jack shaft for chain tension, allow you to, to do a lot of different things, and um, it, it's just a very solid kit. It's very well made. It's high precision. It works. I mean, simple as that. Um, you know, so, you know, we're the first guys out with that big block engine plate. You know, we, we made it out of heavy 316th plate, you know, for you guys putting a big block engine on, on a car, on a mini bike or go kart or buggy, whatever. You know, we, we have these and we have the ability to make the stuff. Um, and, and thank you, John. We, we try to uh, do our best on pricing. It's not always easy. And, you know, it's, um, can't put a price on quality, can you? So, you know, that, that is a challenge in the manufacturing process is to be able to make something and be able to affordably price it. You know, if you guys all wanted $200 chain guards, I'd have 600 of them today, you know, as long as you committed to buying them. But, um, you know, that's just not always realistic. So we have to meet, meet certain price thresholds, be able to get a product to you that is well-made, will last for you, will work properly, and is substantial at a reasonable price so you know if you guys think about that um email me help at ombwarehouse.com that's who i am um that's what i do um just say hey Greg goat why don't you uh make me one of these and um <clears throat> i'll uh, i'll do what i can for you so just let me know um like i said i've got a lot of stuff in the works right now um i've got some products coming out for the uh Baja Warriors and the Coleman bikes that, that you guys are going to say, why didn't I think of that? Because I did. Got to love the diesel neighbors that have to get on in front of the house, right? Yeah. All right, Clayton, thank you for that, sir. I will, uh, I will check you out. Uh, I will check that out. And uh, Tim, um, Boy, I don't know about stickers. Tim, why don't you email me, help at ombwarehouse.com. Say, hey, Gray Goat, stick it, and I'll get you some stickers, okay? I've got a secret stash. Shh. Okay. All right. So <laughs> Mrs. Goat brought out Jack's the dog, but he was camera shy and said, nah, Hollywood's not for me. He's uh, He's got a face for radio like his uh, papa. So anyway, that's it for the night. Uh, I, I, I do appreciate each and every one of you stopping by. I need your help, um, just like you need my help at ombwarehouse.com. Um, email me, help at ombwarehouse.com. We are ombwarehouse.com. If you have an idea for something or if you're thinking that you need something, let me know. Um, I, I will explore the uh, DB30 wheels because I know that that is important to uh, a lot of folks out there. Um, gosh, I think I've had three calls this week um, <clears throat> wanting to uh, get the disc brake rear wheel for the doodle bugs. Um, I think I have one of the drum brake wheels left in stock. So um, the Motovox hydraulic brakes was a different deal. You know, we actually ordered those and they sent us all DB30 hydraulic brakes. So um, we, we are working on that as well. So I will uh, put that in my notes. Thank you, guys. Uh, I, I do appreciate all you guys. And uh, thanks for stopping by the Gray Go Garage, hanging out with me and drilling and tapping that crank. And um, have a good evening. Be safe out there. Um, if you're so inclined to go real fast, please wear a helmet, maybe some gloves and long sleeves, okay? I saw that one guy, um, don't know where I saw him, but he was all tore up from the floor up, um, his arms, his face, everything. Uh, poor guy. You know, I, I think asphalt is about, what, six grit, and uh, it'll chew you up quick. So you guys be safe out there, especially riding on the streets. And um, we will be back next week live from the Grey Goat Garage. This is OMB Warehouse. I am Eric the Grey Goat. And um, if you have any questions, you need some help with a product, help at ombwarehouse.com. Thank you so much. I do appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you very much. Have a good evening.
Thank you, Chad. Appreciate that, brother.